saying goes, uh, anything can happen, and it just did, uh, I should have known this, I should have, uh, every so often reformat the, the, uh, the, the memory card. Didn't do that, and I didn't lose much that, I mean, just, I, I think I just lost the, uh, the earlier vlog, uh, on the research desk. But anyways, uh, is, uh, so 5.30 in the morning. The day's not over yet. I'm just going to take a couple hours break. So let me give it a time and date stamp. It's 5 hours and 34 minutes into the day of Sunday, March 27th, uh, 2016. Yeah. Oh, the day's not over yet because in two hours, I'm getting well, less than two hours, around 7, 7.30. I'm getting up to go to church. Uh, that will be the next part of my day. It's all in Greek. That's where I learn my. Uh, I do my Greek studies uh, there as well. Uh, there's a lot of information, a lot of libraries that I can get access to uh, once I know my Greek better. I do have the ability to do translation in Greek uh, from the ancient Greek into uh, English. I can do that. Uh, it's an issue of uh, when you're translating. Translate isn't, is. Is mostly library work. You can take six months to do a, a study on the on a, a phrase, on a word, or whatever, and that's not an issue. But understanding the spoken part and understanding the sort of the, the intonations in the culture, which actually enhance translation, uh, is a more complex part. In other words, uh, there are things and documents. If I, if I could sit down and read the entire document understand inflection and understand uh, what an author is trying to say or how they're saying it. Uh, this gives you the taste or the flavor of who the author is, what the author is writing about, uh, how they write. Uh, it, 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 there's a lot, of, a lot of information that you cannot simply translate from a word study into uh, your own sort of experience. In other words, uh, you can get the words, but a large chunk of the time the experience is missing. And remember I said before, when you're reading something, if you're doing it on the next uh, sort of the research level, uh, then you're not reading, you're simply reading a book. You're reading somebody's experience. Even if it's a fictional, fictional, uh, fictional writers often put a lot of their own uh, ideas, their own experiences into the book. So you, in many cases, you're out, you are indeed. Uh, experiencing to a certain degree the author's experience. In other words, that, that experience is being translated uh, as you read your book, uh, as you read the book. But if you don't fully understand the language, you don't have a, you know, a common knowledge grasp of it, then there, and you only have the academic, the, writ, the, writ, the written part. And this is a sort of the opposite side of if you're not reading at all, then there, there's no academic experience. Same thing on the other side. If there's no experience to what you're reading, then a large chunk of what you're reading, the, the experience part of it, simply melts away. It's not there. And so to imp improve and enhance my uh, understanding in, within the Greek libraries, uh, I'm now going in and trying to understand more of the culture, more of the language. Uh, in, terms of, in, in terms of the sense of how does language translate into culture, how does culture translate into language? So it is more of an anthropological study, if you will, but it's not an anthropo anthropological study in terms of seeing everything in English. It's, immer it's, it's, it's being immersed in the Greek culture, being immersed in trying to understand uh, who the Greeks were better. And this will give you an understanding of 
of uh, a large chunk of the libraries that are sort of uh, not only really beyond reach right now, but just sort of you're not get, grasping the full uh, nature of this library. What's there is not fully there for you because there are barriers to your understanding. That's what you always research is always about pushing your barriers forward. Forward. So uh, this is one of the steps. This is why it's, you're always like you're in uh, grade seven. You're always like in school. And this, this is basically your understanding should be around the junior high level, around the middle school level. That's where your feeling should be because. If you're more than that, then you're not you're not going out far enough. If you're younger than that, then uh, maybe you're too far out and you're not uh, sort of bringing things together properly. So, uh, properly, so um, there's a bit of juggling to do. So uh, that's what's going to happen in just about two hours. Uh, about seven thirty, I'll be leaving. So uh, I haven't I haven't rigged up a, uh, uh, a, a a filming set for the, for. A, a, a filming apparatus that, that's portable yet. I will work on that, but uh, so right now uh, I'm just filming in here. I oh, feel I can put together a, a portable filming rig that I can bring easily into into different places. So uh, that's it for now. I'll uh, talk to you in a couple hours, maybe when I uh, get up again and start getting ready for church, and we'll. Have a bit of a discussion then too. too. So anyways, uh, that's it for now. And I'll see you uh, in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory Rails uh, BTS Vlog. All right, take it easy. <clears throat> well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the next segment of the BTS Vlog. Well, I guess you can gather by now that one of the reasons why I say it, I don't say it like in other vlogs, like like in other vlogs, one of the reasons why I don't say good night and good morning is that the night and morning changes all the time, and sometimes one day morphs into the next, and it's difficult to tell what, what, where one day begins and the other day ends. So that's why I use uh, welcome to the next segment of the BCS vlog or. Welcome to, uh, I'll see you in the next segment of the BTS. I have no idea where it's going to start or where it's going to end. So, uh, given this uh, situation, uh, uh, we can line the uh, ep the segments, the clips up uh, however we want. We don't have to worry about, you know, I'm st am I starting the day with the, with, the, with the right clip or am I ending the day with the right clip? Uh, because the reality is, is there really is no end of one day and beginning of another, another day. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let me give you a time and date stamp, because <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just getting going. Uh, I'm here because uh, I ended up coming here first, rather than going back to the bed to uh, get ready. Uh, so, yeah, it is 17 hours and 21 minutes into the day of uh, Sunday, March 27th, uh, 2016. Now, if you're wondering, what's this 20 hours and 17 minutes? Well, because they, 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 oh, it's, tw it's 20, it's, it's tw 20 hours, tw 20, what, 20 hundred hours or something like that, right? They use uh, 1,700 hours. Uh, uh, but the thing is, there is no 1,700 hours or 1,200 hours or, or anything like that. What happens is there's only 24 hours in the day, so... Uh, I'll give you the full tw the, the the actual the actual number of hours in the day. It's, so it's nineteen hours and twenty two minutes. That's the proper time. That's the proper statement of the time. Uh, A.M. and P.M. are uh, are adjustments of these things. They're uh, so people only have to use the twelve hours and not use the uh, the full twenty four. So, but the thing is, for me, I don't really. It's not much of an issue once you get used to twenty four hours. Then you. Mm. Could easily easily go back and forth. So you know, nineteen hundred hours. You know, minus twelve gives you uh, seven. So it's uh, it's about seven twenty, seven twenty-five. So we're in that that ballpark range there. Um, I will be <laughs> because I've been sort of neglecting it. I will be uh, uh, doing the video, the segment for Annie. Uh, of Bretelli, uh 
today, uh, probably in the next segment after I have breakfast. Uh, it's not going to be separate because I can't find the video that that she was she asked the question. And so uh, I'm just going to post it in uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, video, so you'll see it. You see this. It's going to be the next clip. Uh, so uh, I was watching uh, a lot of my my uh, my um, IPTV last night. Uh, and I'm doing more, doing more work on it. I was watching Shade Tards. I was watching uh, the CVX Live, and th that's how I get I get out and get my experience in terms of all these different conferences. I I I will probably never end up going to one of these conferences or or or, or showcases. Uh, I just spend an enormous amount of time at research, and it's because I spend so much time at research that it's it's hard getting out. So. That's the way. That's kind of the way things go for me. So, uh, I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. This is the physiology of waking up. The uh, what happens uh, with sleep deprivation. Uh, sometimes you do have a hard time forming words or thinking of what to say next. And um, the best thing to do is leave it here for now and uh, come back in the next segment. And uh, deal with it then. So we'll see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory RL's uh, BTS vlog. Alright, take it easy. Bye-bye. One of the problems of research is uh, it's 5.30 in the morning and I'm still at the research desk. There's uh, the 21st episode of uh, Big Bang Theory L's BTS vlog is now being rendered. I'm working on my notebook. I'm readjusting my notebook for new research that's going to come in within the next week or so. Uh, new projects are going to come into uh, uh, play. So I have to reorganize my notebook. As I said before, if, you know, uh, the your notebooks give you the capacity to move forward faster or, or and better because you've got things more organized. So the organization does, to a certain degree, play a play a factor in being efficient. But it's also you know it's not the if you look at organization and, and focus solely on the organization, then you'll miss the research because a lot of the research, particularly if you do going into brand new areas that where nothing's been done, you know, sort of looking for the edges. Of science, the edges of knowledge. Then, uh, there's nothing really there to organize. Your first stuff that comes in is going to be, uh, how the, the the best term for it is ad hoc. It's sort of miscellaneous or it's it's disorganized, and it's only when you get enough information, enough bits and pieces that you can start beginning to organize. You can start to organize things into a uh, uh, more uh, uh, sort of an organ, a more organized contract. You're not. Gonna, it's not going to be organized. It's going to be. Mm, it's going to be more organized than it was before. In other words, the chaos <laughs> that's there as you bring the the as you randomly bring the new pieces in is going to reduce. This is what you're trying to get across here. Is that, that you never actually reach a point of ah amazing structure. You get good enough. You get we're moving forward, but. <sighs> The actual solid pieces take a long, really long time to put together, and even then you have an approximate. Uh, so let me give you the time and date stamp anyways. It is uh, 5 hours and 32 minutes into the day of Monday, March uh, 28th, 2016. Uh, as I was do working on my notebooks, uh, I've been watching more of my, uh, I, my IPTV. I'm on version uh, 1.4.1. Uh, these, this is basically it's basically a web page that you put onto your Android TV device, and you use a web browser to choose all of the various different uh, uh, shows that you can watch, whether it's on YouTube or it's on your uh, storage system. Everything is all on that one TV guide, and it, that gives you, that's sort of like a channel access type of thing, and it's very easy to go through and, and sort of get things as you need as you need them so uh, yeah that's how things are working right now uh, I'm hungry and this is the problem when you get hungry like when you get tired when you're tired like this when you, instead of 5 30 in the morning I haven't 
slept properly today. Um, I slept well Sunday during the day. I mean, I slept from 12, uh, I mean, I slept from uh, about 10 o'clock in the morning till just about 6. But, if you would assume that 8 hours would be good enough, because it's, you know, 10, 10, to, 10 to noon is, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning till noon is 2 hours. And then from noon till 6 is 6 hours, that's 8 hours there. But what happens is when your body is, uh, in a sleep deficit, deficit, eight hours in some cases is not enough because uh, your body is in a <laughs> overall sleep deficit. It improves things to a certain degree, but at the, at the, at the same time, it's not enough to um, sort of uh, uh, balance out all the negatives that you've done during the week. So, so that's sort of the whole thing is you know, balance your positive and your negatives and try to sort of uh, come to some half to even decent sort of form of uh, balance for your body but uh, that's not always you know that's that's, it. that's not always possible so sometimes you're in a uh, worse deficit than than you were before so uh I'm going to leave uh, Annie's segment to its own thing, to, to its own segment, uh, a short segment like that. Uh, I don't know whether I should do it now. Let's see what time is it. Yeah, I can do it. Uh, so this is for Annie, Annie for Bertelli. Uh, from Bertelli. Bertelli is a, uh, 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 one of the, t one of the uh, TV shows, the IPTV shows that I watch on YouTube. Uh... It's about a family. They're, I think they're in uh, uh, Maryland. Uh, the dad's Navy. So, uh, asking a, she was asking in one of the car rides, she was asking a question about time. You know, who first invented time? You know, who was the guy who invented time? Well, I don't know if anyone who actually invented time, and she was also referring to the calendar as well. But time uh, has been around for a very long time, uh, <laughs> ironically enough, you know. Uh, I, you know, one could see early time dials, uh, you know, sundials showing the time. So the, the first time where it was based on, you know, watching the shadows uh, of, of an object as, uh, as the sun went, went through the day. So you had a rough uh, morning and a rough, you know, like it, was, it was visual. It wasn't anything precise. Uh, some of the early uh, sundials that really kept track of things uh, show up in archaeology uh, with the Indians, uh, not not our Indians, the uh, North American Indians, but the real Indians from India, uh, when you have uh, various different uh, sundials. And these are monuments, these are large things, large-scale uh, constructions that show graduations they have like a measurement that as a shadow goes up you can sort of see what time of day it is and so they have very precise measurements on there and so, the, so you begin to realize that the tracking of stars and particularly the sun uh, and the night sky has been going on for a very long time uh, some of the old if you know look at the, it, it, look at the Egyptian uh, pyramids uh, some of the papyrus rolls that I'll talk about the construction of pyramids. Date date back to about three thousand BC. So if we're in two thousand AD, uh, you go with two thousand years for uh, zero AD, and then another three thousand to get to back to three thousand uh, BC. You're talking about five thousand years ago uh, was when we start seeing our first uh, uses of astronomy. Uh, to build uh, monuments to the uh, the uh, pyramids of Egypt, and there were other objects as well that were there before the pyramids of Egypt, uh, were known by uh, archaeologists to have been built using astronomy. They used the uh, alignment of the stars uh, to sort of uh, uh, measure out how the structure structure would lay out what direction they should face, how they should face, uh, and their alignment was, were, is actually quite precise. Uh, 
when you go back and look at them and the uh, what marvel a lot of the archaeologists was exactly how precise these monuments are astronomically aligned uh, uh, they, and they're aligned not simply to the sun but they're actually aligned to constellations like orion and when you understand this and you realize that the travelers when they traveled at night uh, use stars as their guides to travel back and forth between various different areas and throughout the Middle East and uh, into Asia. This is where the, where the old culture was back, the old, the ancient the civilization, the antiquity, the civilizations of antiquity uh, were all in these particular areas. And you start seeing the uses of astronomy for this, you begin to realize that uh, what was held in the Library of Alexandria were not calendars. They were they were they were travelers' logs. They were star charts, and the travelers' logs would, would be actually star charts, and they would navigate from point to point uh, with these star charts. And now we call it a calendar, but the ancients didn't view uh, a calendar as a calendar. They saw it as a t as a map to the stars, and the, and that map to the stars uh, would show them what cities to go to. How, you know that would be their navigation tools, and so. Egypt collected this from uh, oh, about 3000 BC uh, and they began working on a calendar eventually. It, it, it showed up in the, basically in the Roman Empire. The first major calendar came about in the Roman Empire. It's the Julian calendar. And it wasn't a, a simply a solar calendar or a lunar calendar. It was a combination of calendars. It was actually a, 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 a astronomical calendar that included both the lunar and solar cycles in it. And so when you look at the calendar that was developed, you see that there is uh, the months, the 28 and 30 days uh, for the month are basically the uh, length of the, the, the solar uh, one, <clears throat> one lunar cycle, right? Full moon, new, you know, full moon, quarter moon, half moon, three quarters moon, you know, that's, that's the, you know, the, wa the waxing and the waning. And then there's new moon. That full cycle there uh, represents uh, one cycle of the moon. That's about 30 days. Uh, so you can see the phases of the moon between the uh, throughout the month and sort of see how things uh, end up working out there. And you'll see that month to month uh, there is a set series of phases for the moon. Uh, and so this is how our time started coming together. And... The calendar didn't change till about 1500 A.D. So, from about 3000 B.C. to about 1500 A.D., uh, there was one calendar they used throughout most of the uh, uh, Hellenic and then the then the Roman Empire. So you have uh, on this this calendar because a lot of astronomers were working on this calendar. You have uh, close to uh, let's give it to 1000 A.D. So 3000 to zero A.D. is 3000 years. Uh, up to 1000 AD, you now have 4,000 years worth of data points. And there's this mathematician, a uh, 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 German mathematician called Gauss, uh, and he talks about the data points and how accuracy is dependent. The more data points that you have for uh, a, a calculation, the more accurate your, uh, your, your equations will be. And so when they built, they came in as the Pope, the Pope came in around 1500 AD and says, no, no, this calendar, the old calendar, the, uh, the Roman calendar is wrong. We're not going to use the old calendar, the new Roman, the Roman calendar. We're going to use a new calendar. They created a new calendar. The number of points that they used, the data points, were significantly less than uh, what they had for the Roman calendar. And so there was, a, there was a discrepancy between the calendars. But really what they ended up doing is they ended up sort of taking a lot of the old calendar, uh, changing out three, uh, about 13 days, so there's a 13 day difference between the, uh, the new calendar the 13, and the old calendar, the Julian calendar. And uh, this is how we have our calendar from today. So our calendar for today actually comes from ancient Egypt. It's uh, an Egyptian calendar. Although we don't use uh, 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 Alexandria, Egypt, as uh, the uh, zero point, we use uh, 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 Greenwich, the, a village in England called the Greenwich, and that's called the Greenwich Mean Line, and that's where your zero point is for uh, all time. That's your that's your, your sort of where 
you can cross that line when it's one day on one side and another day on the other side. So, uh, <laughs> that's where that's basically our the brief history of time. Uh, so look at look up uh, Greenwich, England. It's also known as Universal Time. Uh, look that up. Look up uh, the uh, ancient astronomy uh, navigators and sailing by astronomy, sailing by the stars, navigation by the stars. Uh, that's all interrelated. Uh, Gauss has an area called geodesics. You can look up geodesics uh, to get a better understanding of this. Anyways, Annie, I hope this kind of helps or answers your question. If you have any more, just sort of uh, drop me a line and um, I'll see what I can do in terms of uh, getting something more in depth. <laughs> Alright, take it easy. I'll see you in the next segment. I think I'm going to have some cereal now because I'm, I am hungry and I think what popped in my mind right now is I want some cereal. So <laughs> I will go get some cereal at, at uh, quarter to six in the morning. Breakfast for really late dinner. Democratic Earth. Earth.